Good evening, church family. Welcome to Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day, wow. I think the Groundhog Phil got it right. Because they've already canceled school tomorrow. There's no school Friday in Armstrong County. And definitely no school Saturday and Sunday. Except for Sunday school on Sunday. If you want to join us on Sunday at Christ Bible Fellowship, we'd love to have you. At Sunday school starts at 945 and church begins around 1045. We thank you so much for tuning in tonight and welcome. Question I have for you is, how are your prayers doing? How is your talks with the Lord doing? How is your walk with the Lord? How is your relationship with the Almighty Lord? And how is your journey going as you explore God's green earth that He created? As you explore, how is your relationship with reaching lost friends and family, people around you? And another question, heavy question, one that people don't like to hear. But maybe, since you tuned in tonight, Maybe this question's for you. How are you at keeping the so-called Ten Commandments? Welcome to service 9 of 13. These are the refueling services. As we journey together in renewal, restructure, a time to reconnect, a time for re-energizing, and a time to be refreshed in the Lord. Our walk with the Lord over time, sometimes gets broken down. The communication sometimes gets broken down to the point where we need that refreshing, we need that refueling, we need that time with the Lord. Sometimes we just need a refresher. Let's refresh of where we've been. Just I won't go back too far, but look at how you are living. There are so many ways to find healing for a hurting heart, a hurting life. But most of us choose temporary solutions, such as pills, gambling, alcohol, internet, drugs, smoking, and many, many more solutions that are temporary fix, which equal, as we just spoke of in the weeks past, to hurts, habits, and hang-ups. But other things we find healing in is we find healing in the Lord. We find healing in music. We find healing in quietness. We find healing in prayer. We find healing in others. We find healing in pastors. We find healing most of all through Christ, through the Holy Spirit and the love that Christ shows us. These last things we spoke of make things better. The other things make things worse that we talked of first, but then second, we talked of the Lord and one who can actually help us get through the situation, make things better. See, if you sat down with a counselor and you sat in his office and maybe you sat in a chair or on on TV, they sit on the couch. So let's say you sit down on the couch to sit down and talk with a counselor and you say nothing at all. Absolutely nothing. For your whole 35 to 45 to an hour session. You had no communication. How can that counselor help you? See, there's a difference with the Lord, though. The Lord knows your troubles, knows your problems, knows your hurts, knows your pains before you even come to Him with them. But He wants you to come to Him with them. See, the last things we spoke of, the Lord brings us through. But the Lord makes things better. We must remember, God is the root of all of our healings. Of the ways of our hurts, habits, and hang-ups... Only one can deliver us from them, and that's the Holy Spirit. Let's take a moment and begin with a word of prayer. Please will you bow your heads with me as we lift up your prayer requests 
and the prayer requests that came through the prayer chain and the ones that need that extra special touch tonight. Would you please join me in bowing your heads for a word of prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight and we thank you so much for this time we have together. We thank you so much for this message you put before us. We ask you to be with the ones out there who are viewing this service tonight. We ask you to be with them. We ask you to comfort them. We ask you to be with the ones with loss. We ask you to be with the ones who are rejoicing with a new baby in their life. We ask you to be with the ones that just got some bad news. And we ask you also to be with the ones who just may have received some good news. We ask you to be with the families who are hurting so bad. We ask you to wipe their tears from their eyes and let them know you're right there every step of the way that they are not alone, that you're side by side with them. You never leave their side and you are right there every single step of the way. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with our nurses, first responders, EMT, firemen, police force. We ask you to be with our military, missionaries. We ask you to be with the ones that go out and sing songs of praise and spread the gospel through their testimony and song. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with this service tonight from beginning to end and help it to reach and touch lives and change lives and re-energize lives and refuel lives with you. Dear Heavenly Father, I can't change one person, but I know you can. You put these messages before me, you put these services before me, and these 13 messages, these 13 services, are so special to me. Thank you for showing us the love that we need each and every single day. Please be with the ones that are hurting. We lift up the different ones on the prayer prayer chain. We lift up the ones who need that extra special touch. We lift up each and every single prayer request coming through on the live feed. We ask you to be with the unspoken prayer requests. We ask you to be with the dear ones who are in pain tonight. Lay your healing hands upon them and let them know you're there every single step of the way. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day you blessed us with. We thank you for the sunshine. We thank you for the little bit warmer weather. And we ask you just to be with us, Lord. Be with us, Lord. And we thank you so much and praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for tuning in. So, tonight's message is called Communication Breakdown. And, uh... The first question you probably have is, what is communication breakdown? A communication breakdown is defined as a failure to exchange information, kind of like I talked about before we had prayer. The communication breakdown was speaking of kind of like being in a counselor's office where you was talking with a therapist possibly or someone like that to get some things off your chest, to get some things that you need help with. Well, the thing is, the Lord's right by your side every single step, every single way, every way, shape, and form. He knows your hurts. He knows your pains. He knows what you need to bring to Him. Even that stuff you have hid way down here, way down here where you don't want anybody to see it or anybody to hear about it or anybody to know about it. He knows about what you have hid. He knows about what you are not bringing to Him. So why not just take it and say, Lord, I want to hand this over to you. I want to hand this information over to you so you can help me with it. Communication communication breakdown is a lack of communication. We need to have a good communication with the Lord. A good connection. How would the communication breakdown occur? Well, first off, first off, let's begin tonight's service together. In Exodus chapter 20, it starts out this way. And God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt 
and out of the house of bondage. Now, whether the Lord's talking to the Israelites, speaking to Moses to talk to people, speaking to different ones out of the Bible, no matter who he's speaking to, but this right here, I hear people all around me saying, what did God ever do for me? You ever hear somebody say that? You ever hear somebody say that? What did, what did God ever do for me? What did He ever do for me? First off, He blessed you with life. And this right here, And God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. First off, He blessed you with life, and what He brought you out of today... You were in the bondage of sin. You were in the shackles of sin. You were in the chains of sin. And He did bring you out of maybe that bad marriage. Maybe He brought you out of that bad relationship. Maybe He released you from sadness. From the shackles of depression. Maybe that anxiety that you had. He kept you safe from harm. Did God deliver you from your past? Yes, if you handed it over to him. If you held on to that one piece, though, you got to hand that over too. But the thing is, did he make you whole? Yes, he did. If you asked him openly and honestly to come into your life and make you whole. Verse 3 says, and this is the first of the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods before me. And other versions say, thou shalt have no other gods before me. You shall have no other gods before me. Wow, huh? One from the ten. One from the ten. You shall have no other gods before me. We put so many things in this life before God. That we make gods in the place of our Creator in heaven and earth. I'm going to say a couple of the things. I'm going to say about ten of the things that we put before God. These are just a tip of the iceberg. Seriously. The very, just the tip of the mountain. There's a whole mountain there. And we're just going to cover the top. Number one is work. We put work in God's place. Work takes the place of church sometimes. Not just on Wednesday nights. I'm talking about on Sunday mornings, Sunday evenings. Whenever the church doors are open, you have that opportunity when the boss says, well, you can stay if you want to. We have enough people. Or you can go ahead home. And you're like, well, if I go home, eh, I can stay here and make some money. Sometimes your family needs that money. But other times, it's nice to go home and get your family and go out and enjoy church together. But the thing is, sometimes we put work before God whenever we don't have to. Sometimes the Lord opens up doors so we have that day off. And we end up working it. Because we're wanting more and more. Sometimes we put work before God. And then number two reveals its head of success. Where we want to work up that corporate ladder. And that becomes our God, trying to make it to the top. And we don't care who we got to push out of the way or be mean to or rude to to get there. Number three is our phones, and I don't even need to say much about that. Because we all know the first thing we grab in the morning is our phone. The last thing before we go to bed is our phone. We check our phones regularly. How many times a day do you check your relationship with the Lord? Do you check in with the Lord during the day? And I don't mean, dear Lord, I'm having trouble stopping. I need you right now. I don't mean that. I mean, dear God, I'm having a good day. Thank you. Just checking in with you. Thank you for watching down on me. Thank you for blessing me with this day. Just checking in throughout the day. Walking and talking with the Lord. Having a real relationship with the Lord. But our phones take that place. Our phones take that place. We grab that phone every second of every day. More probably than we need to. 
playing games. You ever think of whenever you pull up that game on your phone, you could actually pull up your Bible and maybe read some scripture? Or maybe instead of texting or doing something else, sending emails, whatever you're doing on your phone to take up time when you're waiting on that doctor appointment, try just reading your devotion. You can put them on your phone and take them with you. Let's move on to four. Your image. Your image means a lot, and sometimes we put our image before God. And that's where Facebook steps in. A lot of times we are too worried about how we look look and how others look at us. How should we look? How should we dress? Should we dress casual? Should we dress up? Should I just dress the bum around the house today? Sometimes we put a little bit too much thought into our image. And eventually, some people get so infatuated with themselves, it actually becomes a problem and they need help. Because they actually put their image before God. Number five, materialistic things. This can be anything. Materialistic things, anything that's material, that's temporary, can come before God. We put so many of these things, and it's so easy to do. We have to be so careful, so very, very careful with materialistic things because the enemy slides them in there and slides them in there and slides them in there, and before we know, we have a whole stack of materialistic things in our lives. And they're all temporary. We can't take any of that with us. Nothing. We can take none of that with us. Number six, sex. Pornography, different things like that, things that drag us down. And lust, lustful eyes looking at others. These are things that people put in their lives so much that they don't want to let go of. And that leads us to seven, money. We know money is the root of all evil. It's true. But money has gotten so difficult to even keep a hold of anymore because money is no longer paper and change it becomes on a plastic card and the thing is on a plastic card you don't see the money as you're swiping it and it's so easy to get caught up in spending more on that plastic card than you ever even dreamed of And sometimes that money, we get so hungry for that money, we make that money our God. And eventually we don't even want to give any of that money to God. The one who blessed us with the money. So we have to be very, very careful. And these are the last two. um, Actually, last three. Number eight is self. We put ourselves before God. We look at ourselves in the mirror, and a lot of us make ourselves become our own God. And we put ourselves before God. Selfishness goes hand in hand with that. We are too concerned about ourselves to be concerned about anybody else. And we have to watch that. Watch a prideful self. And number nine, this one right here kind of may hit home with you. Um, The Lord had me add these because I had eight and he had me add the last two. Number nine is your children. Your children can become your gods. They can run your life. And I don't mean you running them back and forth to soccer practice or basketball, football, hockey, cheerleading, whatever it may be. Your kids and your grandchildren can become your gods. And you have to be careful of that. Some people put their grandchildren and their children before God. We have to remember we would not have those grandchildren, those great-grandchildren, those great-great-great-grandchildren. We would not even have those children if it wasn't a blessing from the Lord above. He's the one who created those children for us to take care of and raise, but not to make them idols or not to make them gods of our lives. Last one, number 10, is animals. I didn't realize how much there was in raising a puppy. 
I found out how difficult it was raising a daughter, which whenever she was a baby, we at least knew when she had to go to the restroom because she would get fussy after she went to the bathroom. Then we'd change her. Now a dog, they don't know when they have to go to the bathroom when they're a puppy. So for since October, my wife and I have been training a puppy back and forth. We, we didn't make it the god of our lives, but we did have to take care of it. And it took a lot of discipline. And he does very well now. Not that you care, but the thing is, there's a lot of people that, and just for a heads up, now he goes to the door whenever he has to pee, or number two. But, uh, and we're very proud of him for that. The Lord blessed us with a great puppy, and um, we love having him. But we have to be careful with our animals, though, because those animals become showpieces sometimes. Sometimes we want to take those animals and make them a god of our lives. And these are just ten. Like I said, these are just ten. Sometimes we even put family. Family before God. A lot of our communication breaks right here. And that's just the first commandment out of ten. One from the ten. A lot of our communication breaks right here. You shall have no other gods before me. Remember, there are nine more commandments. But if you have to begin somewhere, this is a great place to start. The first of the Ten Commandments. Now this next part. This is two of the six communication connections with God. See, if we have that break, we have to have that reconnection. So these would be the, I'm not going to give you all six tonight. You'll have to come back. <laughs> and I'm not sure if I'm doing them on Sunday or next Wednesday. Um, which, uh, it's whichever way the Lord leads me. And uh, the, um, the two of six communications, connections with God. Number one, and the Lord even had me change this one. Give God the first hour of your day. This is a great way to have that communication reconnect with the Lord. Give God the first hour of your day. In Mark chapter 1, verse 35 through 37, it says, And in the morning rise up a great while before day. He went out and departed into a solitary place, and there prayed. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. See, the thing is, if your family sees you waking up early in the morning and getting closer in your walk, praying, walking and talking with the Lord, whenever you get up and you give that first hour of your day to pray, read your Bible, and get closer in your walk and talk with Him, it may change how they go about their day. And maybe they'll say, can I join you? Nothing's better than a family coming together in Christ's name. You will not believe the change in your relationship. Please try these two exercises. That's just one. That's one of these exercises of the six of your communication connections with the Lord. If there's a broken communication, the communication breakdown has to be fixed. You will not believe the change in your relationship. Please try these two exercises. What would hurt? It can only help, right? Yeah, you might have to get up a little bit earlier. But a little bit of sleep that you lose may be a huge gain. I mean, listen to this. Listen. 
It can only help you. You might have to get up a little bit earlier in the morning. But that little bit of sleep that you may lose will be a huge gain if you can get your life back on track with the Lord. As you lose some of this world and you lose some of these worldly things, you will gain eternity. Next of the two, this is number two, as I get ready to close. Walk, talk, pray, and listen. Number two is walk, talk, pray, and listen. This is a hard one for some. To walk with the Lord, talk with the Lord, pray with the Lord. And the last part right here, listen, listen. Listen to what the Lord is saying. That's the most important part of this. Take your time. Listen to what the Lord is saying. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 27 says, But when I speak to you, I will open your mouth, and you shall say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Whoever will listen, let them listen, and whoever will refuse, let them refuse, for they are rebellious people. This piece is so true. The thing is, if the Lord lays it upon your heart to go talk to someone and someone refuses it, that's on them, not you. You can't force your religion. You cannot force Christ on someone. You may say, hey, pastor, does God really speak to you? Yes, he does. And will he speak to me too? Capital Y-E-S. Yes. Yes. Yes, He will. He will. You just have to receive what He's trying to present to you. First, there's, there's three parts here as I get ready to close. Number one, first way is through His Holy Word, the Bible. And you're like, well, that sounds simple enough. What well, is? but you have to follow through with it. It sounds simple enough to pick up this Bible, but it's one thing to pick it up and put it underneath your arm and say, yeah, it looked pretty good. I look good carrying this around. But the thing is, you can carry this all your life and still go to hell if you don't do this. Because this is where we get fed spiritually. This is where prayers get answered. Whenever we ask something in the Lord to reveal something to us. And it is so awesome. The first time this happens to you, it may never happen to you yet. You may pray about something and the Lord may um, give you Jeremiah 29, 11 or one of the other verses. And whenever he opened it up and you read that for the first time and you're going through and you're like, wow. It is so awesome when the Lord reveals something through his word. Don't take that book for granted. First way is through His Holy Word, the Bible. Now remember, whenever we crack open that Bible, that's when we have issues. That's when distractions, tiredness, mind racing, all the other things come into play into our mind. Things that we could be doing. What about this? What about that? Shouldn't you be doing this? Shouldn't you be doing that? All kinds of different things of distractions that come through, as I've said before, just like when you try and pray and the phone rings. You try and sit down and do your devotion and there's a loud boom outside. And you're like, what was that? I gotta go check. And you go out. You can't see anything. You see nothing that fell or nothing that made the loud noise. But the thing is, we need to, before we pick, as soon as we pick this up, just lay it flat and say, Dear God, please take away the distractions. Please take away the tiredness. And dear Heavenly Father, please help my mind not to race. Help me to be at peace as I crack open your holy word. And maybe things will go a little bit easier. The enemy's still going to be at you because he don't want you reading this. 
See, the enemy does not want you to hear God's word, read God's word, what he is trying to deliver or reveal to you. Satan knows if you hear from God, you will step away from his stronghold on your life. The enemy wants you to be shackled in sin. But God wants you to bring you out of sin. God wants to bring you out of sin. He wants to save you from that life of sin. Second one. Now this one is another area we have trouble with. Through others. Yes, through others. God can speak to us through the Holy Word of the Holy Bible and Scripture, and He also can speak to us through others, sinners or saints. We need to realize that God can speak to us through anybody or anything. Through others, we need to see God can use anyone, anywhere to get what He is trying to say to us through. We just have to humble ourselves enough so we can hear the message that He is presenting. If God can use a... Well, this is what another pastor said, and I wanted to share this with you tonight, and I thought this was a great example. If God can use a burning bush with Moses, He can use a flawed person. Some of us do not hear because of the vessel and how it was presented. That is an awesome piece that this pastor shared. Whenever he shared that, I was like, wow, that is awesome. It is. I mean, listen to those words. What is being said here? If God can use a burning bush with Moses, he can use a flawed, and guess what else? He can use a righteous person just as much. But he can use a flawed person. He can use a sinner. He can use a saint. And some of us do not hear because of the vessel of how it was presented. Some of us won't let it break through because a younger person said it. Some of us won't let it break through because an older person said it. Some of us will not let it go through and let us hear and penetrate our heart because we have not humbled ourselves and said, Lord, whoever you put before me, I want to hear what you have to say. I don't want to stand here anymore and be shackled in sin. I want to hear what you're trying to present to me. I need you more and more in my life. And whatever you're trying to speak to me, I'm ready to hear it. Third. Third way God speaks to us. God speaks through prayer. Amen, right? Amen. God speaks through prayer. If you have ears open and your eyes open, He will also reveal vision. Wow, huh? He's not only going to open up our ears, He's not only going to open up our eyes. He will reveal vision? Yes, but you got to pray to Him. And you got to say, Lord, i I got to envision where you want me, where you want me to be. Please, dear God, give me the vision of where I'm supposed to be today. Give me a vision for how this life of mine is supposed to play out. Please, dear God, give me a vision. All you have to do is talk to Him. So we can see, hear, and follow. You are capable of wonderful things. There's a reason why you tuned in tonight. There's a reason why you tuned in in the future to hear this message. But you have to be open to God of what He's saying to you. Showing you. Revealing to you. So we will be able to overcome the obstacles in our lives as we enjoy our lives in Christ's name. That's all I have for you tonight. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this message. But please remember, you are capable of wonderful things, but you have to be open to what God is saying. God is showing you and revealing. You have to have your ears, eyes, and mind open. You have to have that peace and humbleness. And you can't just say, this guy looks rough, this guy looks so greasy, this guy looks dirty. I'm not going to hear what he has to say. That may be your moment for God to speak to your heart. I'm going to close with numbers tonight. 
Numbers chapter 6, verse 22 through 26, it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons to bless the people of Israel with this special blessing. And this is what the Lord laid upon my heart for tonight to end with. I hope you enjoy this. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Please will you bow your heads with me as we close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight. We thank you so much for this communication breakdown. We thank you for revealing what you have through this one commandment out of the ten. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to be able to get our communication with you on track so that we are able to hear, see, and do what you want us to do. Hear what you want us to hear and see what you want us to see. Please, dear God, be with us all. We love you. We thank you for these messages. We thank you so much for everything you're doing in our lives and everything you haven't even done yet. We lift up each and every single one of our prayer requests. We lift up each and every single one of our people that we have in the bulletin that need those extra special prayers. We ask you to continue being with our dear ones that are hurting and in pain. You know where their hurts and pains are, and they need just a little bit more of you in their life. Help them not to get distracted by the enemy. We love you, we praise you, and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you all. Please enjoy your evening and try and stay warm and be careful on the roads if you go out tomorrow. God bless you all. Hope to see you on Sunday morning at 1045 at Christ Bible Fellowship.